clean strip. What does it strip? Well, it stripped my hair. <laughs> hey everybody, it's good old Terry from uh, Rebel Rooster Headquarters. Oh yeah, I'm just full of jokes today. Hey, we're gonna wrap up the, uh, the Airbrushing 101 series on paint selection. We've got two things to do. We're gonna spray lacquer paints. And in the lineup, we've got Tamiya lacquer paint and Mr. Color. And then after that, we're just gonna really briefly touch up on um, the spraying of enamel paints. We'll be shooting those enamels with uh, odorless mineral spirits. I think I said mineral. If I didn't, there it is, mineral spirits. And then we're gonna do something a little different that kind of is gonna make you wonder uh, I'm going to use Mr. Rapid Thinner in it, which you're probably saying right now, hey, wait a minute, that's a lacquer thinner and this is an enamel paint. Well, we're going to see that it works, for one thing, and we're going to find out the question, uh, does the Mr. Rapid Thinner help with the cure time on these painfully slow-drying enamels? We'll find that out. Uh, and for the lacquer paints, we will just very simply be spraying them with Mr. Leveling Thinner and Mr. Rapid Thinner. And we'll find out if there's really any appreciable difference in their appearance by using a rapid dry versus a slow dry thinner. Um, so anyway, that's the deal for today. After we're done with that, we're going to, well, I'll just give you my quick uh, two cents on paint selection, my final thoughts on that. And then we'll be done with the uh, introductory slash beginner stuff on airbrushing and we can get into more interesting stuff like specific uh, techniques for specifically branded paints like how to make that to me acrylic back there look that close in goodness to a lacquer um, and other things beyond that that'll be very interesting so anyway i've talked long enough let me grab ye old remote control and push pause and we'll get to work here okay i hope you can hear me over the blower um what we've got here is an re a R double I 148 scale P40 that we're going to use. Well, it's been my trusty little friend um, in the mule bin for trying things out. I went ahead and polished up the wings really nicely, and I sprayed one side with the Mr. Color and one side with the um, Tamiya lacquers. And on each one, I took the outer side to go flat, then the middle I went with the semi gloss, and then with the inside I went with the gloss paint. So, let me give you a little sneak peek here, and you guys can place your bets on whose side is what, which is Tamiya's, which is uh, Mr. Collar. Here we go. And I'll give you a little look. Gentlemen, place your bets. Ladies, watch how much your gentlemen spend on that bet. Um, and then what we're going to do next just very briefly I'm going to take on one elevator I'm going to take the Tamiya lacquer paint and I'm going to spray one side of the elevator with Mr. Rapid Thinner and another side of the uh, I should say horizontal stab and elevator uh, to be correct uh, the bottom side with the uh, Mr. Leveling Thinner and on the other side we'll take Mr. Color lacquer paint and do the same thing. We'll paint one side with Mr. Rapid Thinner and one side with Mr. Leveling Thinner. And we're going to see if the dry time on these really does have an effect on the outlook, whether it changes the shine or how level it comes out. Um, I'm shooting in the garage. It's a, a very comfortable 73 degrees. That's a perfect temperature here in Hell's Armpit. And um, I'll be using my usual Iwata HPCS with, uh, oh, we'll go about 18 PSI today. I'll shoot it a little bit high pressure. Kind of give it a disadvantage and see if I can't get it to try to give it a bad start with a high pressure and up close rather than a lower pressure that gives it a better chance to get on there good and sticky. Because basically we just want to, we want to take a, a, a beginner's level of shooting here and see how the paint handles it. Then when we get into the advanced stuff, we can talk about actually shooting these paints proper like and how they're gonna come out. And after we've done that lacquer, then we're gonna take out the good old testers, the little uh, quarter ounce bottle, and we're gonna spray one side uh, with the uh, mineral spirits thing and the other side with 
the uh, Mr. Rapido. I'll do the usual on the lacquers and do that at one and a half uh, to one ratio, one and a half parts thinner to one part paint. And the um, the enamels, you know, I haven't sprayed enamels since I was a kid, so I'm gonna have to fart around with that a little bit. But I'll let you know what the ratio I come up with uh, when I do the spraying. So let me get set up here and we'll get to work. Okay. So here we go with the uh, Tamiya lacquer paint. This is LP28 ball of drab, and I've got it thinned one and a half with uh, Mr. Rapid Thinner. And you're gonna see this is really easy. It dries really quick. It's hard. It's hard to do a bad job with lacquers, everybody. I mean, you know, never underestimate my ability to screw up a free lunch, but when you can see, this is really going easy. I'm just gonna hit it with air now, and you can see, right before your very eyes, it's now ready for another coat. I just spray it till it looks a little shiny, I'm about three inches away, and I'm overlapping it. Now watch this. Uh, you can see a little bit shiny. Watch this. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but you can actually watch this. You'll see it dry before your very eyes when you hit it over there. See? And I'll hit it again in other directions because you know I like to change directions to get a more complete coverage. Alright. And that is that. Now, all that's left for me to do is a very quick and brief, and I'm talking seconds here, get your stopwatches going, very brief and quick back flush, and shoot with hardware store lacquer thinner, and look at the cup, nice and clean, I love lacquers, I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys, this is the easiest paint in the world to, to get a good job done with set the airbrush down here for a second and I'm going to set this out of the way. I am going to cap up the Mr. Rapido and I'm going to get the Mr. Leveling thinner and I'm going to get a little bit of this. Again, one and a half to one roughly. I'm eyeballing it but I know what I'm... I've been doing this to where I've got an eye for it and you will too one day. It won't take you long to get it. Um, and I've got the paint stirred up, put a couple drops in the brush, one, two, three, let's say about four, looks good, back flush, stir, back in the bottle, and now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to spray it on the bottom side with Mr. Leveling Thinner. Now you're probably noticing and saying, hey, wait a second, mister, you got to use primer if it's at all possible. Yes, uh, I do. I do stand by that with the, uh, with the acrylics. But the good thing about these lacquer paints, I mean, I don't want to sound like a broken record or anything, but I just love spraying lacquers because it's so much easier. You don't really need to prime need to prime with the uh, lacquers necessarily because this is pretty aggressive stuff but it will bite into the plastic nicely itself so um, you don't you don't really need to, I mean it's good practice but it's not an absolute must or an even something I would say severely strongly um, suggested because these dry these dry quick they bite into the plastic nicely Look at this one, ready for another coat. And uh, I'm now done with that horizontal step. So I'll just spray out the leftover paint. I'll get some lacquer thinner from the hardware store, back flush, stir, shoot it out of there. And I am already ready again for the next color. I got a nice clean cup. So what's next? Well, I'll tell you what's next. We're going to take out Mista Color. We're going to take out Mr. Color C38 Olive Drab 2, which is actually a pretty close match 
to that to me a lacquer paint um, all the draft. So let me grab a little bit of this uh, Mr. Rapido. Cap it. I've started to paint nicely ahead of time to save a little time here so we can get down to business instead of listening to me talk so much. Stir that up. There we are. And I'll just take this toothpick and put it over here and get that lid out of the way. Get it started. And now we're ready for the other horizontal step. Alright. And again, same thing right around uh Right around three inches. And I'm just telling you guys, these lacquers, they come out of the brush so smooth. Smooth like butter. Get that one there. It's ready for another coat. And like I said, I like to push my paint. I like to overlap that. Bring it back over itself. Good coverage. Hit it with air. Final coat. GTG. Good to go. Alright, now I'm going to get this out of here. I'm going to cheat a little bit and get that last little bit out with some paper towel because I don't want to spray it and use up all my filter there, right? Throw a little bit of regular hardware store lacquer thinner in here. A little back flush, a little bit of mixing around the paintbrush while I spray it out, and the cup is clean. It's ready for another. It's ready for another job. So let me just. I got a bug in there. I see about ten bugs a year out here. And it finds my dug on paint video to show up, you know, and you know, I got nothing to complain about. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys watch uh, Grandpa Will and you see his fly problem, so I got nothing to bitch about with my occasional bug here, but you know, it's for us desert dwellers, bugs aren't really that common. We don't have too many bugs, but all the bugs we have can kill you, they're all poisonous, right? <laughs> All right, so now I got good old uh, Mr. Leveling thinner on here, and now I'll hit the bottom of the horizontal stab. Back and forth, overlapping. Pull that out of there. There we go. Oh, got a little bit of a situation there. There we go. All right, now I'll spray it again. And you see it really, the coverage is really nice too. Doesn't take too much to build it up. I'm thinking I may have gone a little thick with the uh, paint on this one. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna really quickly strip that down and repaint it, but I'm not going to make you watch it. We're going to move on to the enamels after this. I'll see you in a second. Okay, so I've mixed up some enamel with some Mr. Rapid Thinner here. Um, I'm using the Testers 1140 Brown, and I mixed that. You know, I, did, I stopped counting drops. What I did was I just mixed it to that consistency where you run the toothpick up the side of the cup, and it kind of slides down really slow and after about three four seconds it's in the bottom again so um, we're gonna spray this side here with the uh, paint thin with mr. leveling thinner and see how that looks and this is an enamel you know if you know anything about enamels it takes coat after coat after coat so um, I'm just gonna let it sit a little bit and then I'll put another one on and you really got to be careful with this because it's really easy to spray this wet on top of wet and then you end up getting waves in it. You know, it just kind of looks wavy um, because the air is pushing the paint aside and you put more in there and it just makes the ridge taller. So um, if you're going to do anything, uh, 
when you're shooting enamels is give them enough time to dry. And you can kind of see why I'm not crazy about them because it takes a lot to get good coverage on there. Um, I mean, it's gonna take a lot to cover that black up. So they're slow, they're slow to dry, they're slow to layer up and build. Now, the, what's nice about them is uh, they'll give you a really nice finish when you use when you use them well, like the car guys do. Um, you really get some nice finish with them. The, um, but I'm not a car guy; I'm an airplane guy, so I really don't have any use for them, other than as a curiosity or to hand brush, you know. But uh, I'm just gonna finish this side up, and then I'll hit the other side with the odorless mineral spirits, and I'll sh I'll show you when I'm spraying that, but. I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this off for now till I finish this one side. Okay, we're done. Let's first look at the lacquer results here, okay? I'm going to give you another good look here. I'm going to try to aim these lights over here to give you a good, fair uh, look at things here. Flat. Semi and gloss. Let's flip her over. Flat. Semi. And gloss. Now let's look at these two glosses near each other. You can see the one on the right looks a little hazier. There's a, a butt hair hazier. Not quite as tightly focused. And just to make sure it's not light tricks, let's take a look at the right side and the left side. Same thing, that left side now, which was the right side, is a little easier. Now right in here, gonna be a little fair here. You can see there's a little bit of enamel overspray here, but you can see where the uh, actual tape held it in its place. And it's still the same thing. So what's your bet on those? Which was Miss Takala and which one was uh, Tamiya? Okay, this is the Tamiya here. And now, so uh, in, in my opinion, so take it as fact, I think Tamiya puts out a little bit of a better lacquer paint than Mr. Color does. And this is the, a new entrant for him. You know, they haven't done this before. Mr. Color's been doing this for years. Now this is not to say by any manner, way, shape or form, that Mr. Color isn't good lacquer paint. It is really good lacquer paint. But to me, it is really, really good lacquer paint, okay? Um, and here's the kicker. Let me hit you a double whammy. Not only does it look better, but I shot this with the rapid dry thinner, which you would think would make it sacrifice a little bit of the shine. So, uh, couple of surprises there for me. Now the elevators, the horizontal stabs, um, this side we painted with um, with the Tamiya um, lacquer paint and the rapid dry thinner. I'll give you a good look at it. Do your job camera. And now I'm going to turn it over and we're going to see the side with the uh, slow dry thinner and to be honest with you I don't know if the camera is going to be doing a good job of showing you this because uh, I got fingerprints all over it and it's all greasy so I can't see through it that well but um, I really don't see um, any appreciable difference there's a little more depth I guess on the slow but I mean really You'd have to really be, you'd have to really be looking for it to find the difference there. And if you break out, you know, I don't know if y'all got using one of these things here, these uh, little super duper magnifying tools. It's not gonna do you any good because the cameras tend to compensate and not let you get that good look that you would normally get. But uh, if you really get down to the nitty gritty in there, you can see the slow dry thinner is just a little bit smoother. 
But I mean, you really got to look for it. Um, on the other side now, with the uh, with the Mr. Color, this is the side that was painted with the Rapid Thinner, Rapid Dry, and then over here is the side that was with the uh, Leveling Thinner. Now, something to keep in mind here, these horizontal stabs were not polished, okay? This is just over factory grade plastic. I didn't even clean it, okay? If, I, if it counted, you can bet I'd be polishing that and cleaning it, but this is just testing grade, but there you go. So here's your lacquer paints. And um, I told you I was gonna go ahead and shoot that little bottle of testers enamel with um, Mr. Rapid Thinner and with the uh, Mineral Spirits. And, uh, oh boy, I need coffee. Here's the side that was painted with the Rapid Thinner. Now, the question is, is it dry? Because, you know, these testers enamels in those small bottles, they generally come as a rule in glosses unless it tells you it's flat. Let's see if it's dry. Oh, this is always a scary venture. Let me see if I can get it with the light on it so you can see. Well, there's a mark. Definitely not dry, that's for sure. Let's check the side with the uh, with the uh, hardware grade uh, mineral spirits now, and see how that went. Um, even less dry, very very th tacky and thick. Now I'll try it again tomorrow, and uh, we'll see we'll see uh, how that goes. But because it's you. And I really do care. Um, I decided to try a couple more things. I thought, what the hell? Let's try the lacquer thinner, the hardware grade lacquer thinner. And I shot it with that over here on the right side. Okay. And on the right side of the cowl, that is. Here's a good look at it. Okay. And for a comparison, here's the... Uh, Here's the uh, mineral spirit side, odorless mineral spirits. You can see the lamp is much better defined on there than it is with the hardware grade uh, lacquer thinner. That's because it dries really, really quick, right? That hardware grade stuff is hot. It dries pretty quick. And on the side with the uh, Mr. Rapid Thinner, the lamp's not as good as the other side, but it's not half bad. Of course, it's still technically wet. Now let's give this a little dry scratch test and see if the hardware grade lacquer thinner dried it any quicker. Well, I'm gonna say that's a toothpick scratch because it's a sharp toothpick, but I'm rubbing my finger on it and I got no, nothing sticking. But when I do it on these two, I can definitely feel my thumbs are tacky on it. So now, sometimes you get an idea that you're not really planning on getting because you're reaching for something else and then something catches your eye. So, I was reaching for my mineral spirit bottle and I saw this and I was thinking, you know what? That extreme metal is uh, supposed to be an enamel. Oh, by the way, uh, when I get to metallics, I'll tell you all kinds of things about this stuff. Um, but anyway, I thought, you know what? If that's an enamel, this must be an enamel thinner. Let's give it a try. So I shot this side of the nose with it and holy cow, look at this. I mean, that lamp is, I mean, this camera's not going to do it justice, but I'm just telling you, I don't even really like enamels, and much less gloss, but man, that's pretty. Look at that. And uh, now the question of the hour is, is it dry? Probably not. Oh, no, that's quite tacky. But tomorrow it should be good and hard. <laughs> that's what she said. Uh, but anyway, um, there's your two that evolved into four enamel tests here we've got the uh the side that was done with mr rapid thinner it's pretty darn reflective it's pretty nice still a little tacky to the touch we'll try that again in the morning uh here's a side with the uh minerals the hardware grade odorless mineral spirits and uh here's the side with the hardware store lacquer thinner nowhere near as glossy as the others i mean it's 
it's glossier than a flat for sure. I'd call that kind of like the upper end of a semi-gloss. Uh, and then here's where it really, oh my gosh, I'd have never thought of this on purpose. Just one of those accidents that hit you to spray it with the AK Extreme Metal Thinner. Um, man, I'll tell you what, if you're an enamel guy, you're going to love this stuff. Hey, car guys, if you're watching this for whatever reason in the world, maybe everything else is not working and this was the only video that came up, uh, you're going to love this stuff. Try it out on your cars. Um, so there's our test results. And again, these fuselage here, none of this was prepped. None of this was prepped. I did not touch it. I didn't even wipe it down with alcohol to clean it. The wings I did, I gave them a good prep, but the fuselage and the horizontal stabs, I didn't do a darn thing for. So if it looks like this on crappy factory plastic, I mean, if you do your, your work on it and make that plastic ready for it, it's gonna really be good. Uh, it's not gonna convince me to start using enamels. I just really don't like spraying them. Um, I'm a lacquer man and a, well, I'll talk more about that in the wrap up. But anyway, there's your results. Now, let me give you my final thoughts. All right, Rebel Rooster viewers, now the question. What paint should I buy as a new airbrusher? Well, let's take a look at this. It's not a simple answer. Um, it's seemingly a simple question, but there is no simple answer for it. So let's take a look at a few issues, okay? And then we'll put something together from there. We're gonna look at five different things here that you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself and what's most important to you in there. The adaptability of the paint. Uh, can I mix it with other paints? Can I mix it with other thinners? Those kinds of things. The toxicity and safety issue. Is this something that I'm gonna be able to spray in my house? Is this something I have to buy a booth for? Is it gonna stink? Is it gonna smell? You, um, availability, is it easy to find? Can I find this pretty easily or am I going to have to go and order it from, you know, Taiwan or something and wait, you know, six, eight weeks to get it? Or is it something that I can order readily and have it in no time? Ease of use. Is it easy? Is it have an elaborate process? Is it something that's going to have techniques and uh, method of use that across the board is going to be very similar to other paints or has it got its own unique weird way of doing things and uh, the color range is this something where I'm going to say hey I want to have um, Nakajima cockpit green and buy a bottle that says Nakajima cockpit green or am I going to have to buy several colors and mix it to make my own so looking at these five things, ask yourself, what's most important to you? And um, make your decision from there. So to help you, um, what I'm gonna do, if I can get this thing to zoom out, is we're gonna take them out of the, uh, out of the uh, order of the questions. The first thing I'm gonna do, and this is me only, this is just my advice, is, Unless you must have water-based acrylics, I would get, I would not consider the Vallejo model color. Uh, just pain, beyond painfully difficult to clean out of the airbrush. Doesn't look very good. Um, and I would not get the MIG Ammo uh, water-based acrylics to airbrush with. Again, this doesn't mean this paint is useless. I've got it. I've got colors of these because I use it for hand brushing. It's it's great for that. Um, but, you know, I like a little more from my paint than these two will offer me. So if you're in the uh, water-based acrylic, I would not consider these two. I would go with the uh, Mission Models. Now there's another paint out there by Vallejo. It's called Model Air. I've never tried it. Um, so for me to have an opinion on it would be, you know, blowing blowing smoke I, I really would don't know the first thing about them except the word on the street is they're better than the uh, model color but again I just don't know a thing about them so for me to tell you anything would be a lie so let's look at adaptability first if you're looking for a paint that's highly adaptable a paint that you can mix with other paint types and brands you can't beat 
or I have not been able to beat, Tamiya Acrylics and Mr. Hobby Aqueous. As they are, if you mix these with alcohol or um, the X20A thinner um, or any lacquer thinner, whether it's Tamiya's lacquer thinner, Mr. Rapid, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, leveling Thinner, or even the uh, Mr. Hobby Thinner made for their Aqueous line, you can mix these two together. All right, so any thinner, you can mix these two paints together. Now, when you start getting into lacquer thinners, your Tamiya lacquer thinner, your uh, Mr. Leveling thinner, your Mr. Rapid thinner, any of these lacquer thinners that you use, essentially is turning these into lacquer paints. So now not only can you mix these two together, but you can also mix them with this AK Real Colors. You can mix it with Mr. Color. You can mix it with Tamiya Lacquer Paint. You can mix these any way you want. You can do this one and this one. You can do this one and this one. You can do these three. You can mix all six. You can mix them any way you want when you're using a lacquer thinner. And as we saw from the experiment we did with this wing, and the limitations of an iPhone camera are just sometimes not fair because I cannot tell you how good this finish is. These are beautiful, every one of them, beautiful finish. And the, uh, the Tamiya paint by itself looks good, but nowhere near as good as it is when you mix it with other paints. So mixing uh, these together really brings out the best in them. So for adaptability, it's going to be very tough for you to beat Aqueous by Mr. Color or Tamiya's Acrylics. So they win the adaptability. Now, for toxicity and safety, this is where your water-based acrylics are going to be the winners. They're water-based. There's not a whole lot for them to do to you. Um, so you're going to do well with that. The Among the three of them, I would, without hesitation, without even a contest, go with the Mission models. It's water-based, it doesn't stink, and as a water-based acrylic, it's, it's the best one that I've seen. Okay, so availability, um, you can get, honestly, they're all readily available. Um, the Tamiya Lacquer is probably lagging. It's a fairly new introduction with Tamiya. It's not, you know, old school like their acrylic series has just been out forever, okay? So this is probably going to be, of, of them, it's going to be the toughest one to find, but they are all pretty readily available. The absolute easiest to find are these two here. The uh, Testers Enamel Square Bottles and the Tamiya Acrylics. You can find those anywhere. Ease of use, you cannot beat a lacquer paint for ease of use. And, you know, kind of pick, kind of there, kind of not there is this AK Real Colors. It's an acrylic lacquer. It's not a, you know, a, 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 really a true lacquer, I guess, chemically. It goes a little deeper than my understanding of chemical equations and all these other things, but they market it as a acrylic lacquer whereas these are what's called a true lacquer so um so far as ease of use any lacquer whether it's mr color uh tamiya lacquer paints mrp any of these true lacquers you are not going to find an easier way to do things because all you need is a thinner and the lacquer paint and you can use mr leveling thinner you can use mr rep thinner you can use the uh the uh, regular Mr. Color Thinner, you can use Tamiya's Lacquer Thinner. I mean, as long as it's Lacquer Thinner, it can be used on any of these. And all it is is mix and shoot. So ease of use, you're not gonna beat a lacquer paint. They cover quickly, I mean, they cover well and they dry quickly and they're tough. So ease of use, the lacquers are gonna win. Now the color range, 
Um, I'm going to put the winners as, right now as Mr. Color and AK Real Colors. These both have very, very long lists of colors available. So if you're wanting to pick, you know, um, Vomit Chunk Green, <laughs> you're, you're going to find a bottle that says Vomit Chunk Green. So it's just going to say green one. You know, and then you have to go find the bright brown mix, mix and everything. So there's your winner at the color range. Now, overall, I would take these two out of the picture. I'll take enamels out of the picture. And then um, you really can't go wrong with these other ones. Um, when it comes to the ease of use, if you want a paint that's easy to use, now... Once you've got your sea legs, this is not difficult to use. But it's very different from the other ones. People will say you get a lacquer painter and they try mission models and ah, this stuff sucks. It's terrible. I can't stand it. Uh, and, you know, seven times out of ten, it's because they tried to mix it 50-50. Uh, and then two of, the, two of the remaining two out of ten, not three yet, the other two out of ten... Uh, that brings us to nine. That's going to be the people who did not prime. Uh, and mission models absolutely must be primed first before painting. And that last one out of ten is kind of a combination of, um, you know, it might have been a bad thinner bottle or the poly turns chunky. It's just some those one-off rare things. But overall, it's a good paint. So if I was going to stick with a water-based acrylic, I have no reservations on recommending Mission Models paints. But again, I'm going to do a video on each one of these paints and how to spray them, what works with them, what doesn't, little tricks, things that really bring them to life. And there's going to be a pretty lengthy one on Mission Models because um, I don't use their, except for their paint, I don't use anything proprietary from them. Um, now... That kind of brings us to these five. And again, like I said, there are a ton of good paints out there, but these are the ones that I use. So what I would say to you as a final thought is, when you're wondering what paint to buy, I would take two different types of paint. Now, remember, when I'm talking here, I'm talking about using a good lacquer thinner, okay? Like uh, Mr. Leveling, Mr. Rapid, Tamiya acrylic, I'm sorry, lacquer thinner with the yellow top, uh, you know, any of those lacquer thinners. Um, if you're using a lacquer thinner, these all will plug in with each other. You can mix them any which way you want. They will come out beautifully. Um, and what I would do is I would get, if you can, I would get any two of these. Preferably a lacquer and an acrylic and AK kind of sits here in itself. It can be in this pile or it can be in this pile, but it's it's good stuff too. But I would recommend you to get two different types of paint um, because there are days you're not going to want to use lacquer thinner. Maybe you're you got to have the windows closed for whatever reason, and you're just going to spray something a little less rough on you, like uh, you know you're going to want to use the X20A maybe. Or maybe you're going to want to use the uh, the uh, more alcoholy uh, Mr. Hobby thinner for the aqueous lines, which basically it, it smells like a hospital. It's it's it just smells like alcohol. Um, so you're going to want to use something not not quite as you know rough scented and you know fumey as the lacquers. You've got these, but if you do want to use a lacquer thinner, now you've got endless possibilities with all of these. So I would pick one acrylic and one lacquer if it was up to me. You can't go wrong with these. Um, these are all very good paints to use. Now, if you want the Ultra in Ease, and I'm sorry I couldn't test it because I just don't have any, but I've tried it twice and both times I just absolutely loved it was uh mrp some called it known it known as mr paint it's about as easy as you're gonna get you dump it in your cup on the airbrush and just spray it and that's really all there is to it so 
that's my thoughts on what paint you should. And when I say should, I'm just suggesting you should do what you what you want to do. And uh, hopefully this very lengthy series of airbrush basics leaves you with more answers and questions. And um, this is going to be the end of the airbrushing 101 easy stuff. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be shooting all the, except for these two characters over here. And probably the enamel, I'm not going to mess with that anymore. But all of these I'm going to be doing um, individual videos on, how, on spraying each individual one. Um, these are going to be pretty quick. There's really not a whole lot to it. Uh, mission models is going to be quite lengthy because um, there's they got their own little side of the road that they walk on to make it come out good. And there's a couple little sideways entrances that make it work a little better. Um, but when you're getting into these two, um, especially the Tamiya, uh, the Tamiya acrylic, there's some things I do that um, I haven't seen anybody else do, and um, you know, probably just because no one's tried it, but uh, I'm sure a bunch of you will afterwards, that make this paint, this Tamiya acrylic, to look that close to as good as a lacquer. You will not believe it's a Tamiya flat when I'm done with it. Um, so we'll get to those late we'll get to those later on as I make these videos one by one. And I've been uh, I've been poking on the analytics on YouTube, and I notice that uh, typically what happens with videos, from what I talk to the other people who are really good at this, they say, yeah, typically if you can get someone to watch something for more than five or ten minutes on a video, you're doing all right, because um, that's typically where people drop off. And I've been looking at the analytics, and it looks like a lot of you really hung in there for the long haul, and I super duper really appreciate that. Um, so let me just wrap up here really quick and we'll be done So you got the long of it you got the short of it and uh, we're finally at the end of all of this Pay no attention to the coffee mug um, We uh, We've learned a lot along the way here. I hope I've really helped you get an idea where you want to go with your paints And you know don't limit yourself to these paints um, there's a ton of people out there with, with YouTube channels, uh, with other paints they've used, other things they've done. I mean, I watch, God, I watch so many different guys on YouTube in, in the modeling world that just uh, have a lot to offer, you know. So, uh, you know, poke around and, you know, kind of come to a consensus from what you see everybody saying. And um, we're going to head off into the... Um, quotes advanced airbrushing stuff next and um is there really nothing advanced about it it's it's pretty easy you'll be able to do it you know i mean if i can do it you can do it right so anyway uh thanks for sticking around if you like this like and subscribe i desperately need approval no <laughs> just kidding um it just lets me know i'm doing it right for you and um any ideas you got something you might want to see later on throw it down there in the comments um and um yeah that's about it i sure do appreciate you sticking around with me on this and this should be the last very boring video with limited views because i finally did pick a, an editing software to make these a little more interesting for you and uh as they come out it'll get better and better and uh so will you so anyway thanks again and we'll see you next time